Tenet and Swim for Fun podcast. I'm Kirsten, also known as Tenet and Swim for Fun on Ravelry. And this is episode 19 of the Tenet and Swim for Fun podcast. So welcome back if you're a new viewer and, um, well, welcome back if you're a new viewer. Welcome back if you're an old viewer and welcome if you are a new viewer. So as you can see, I do have a Santa hat on today and a ugly flannel shirt on. It's because I'm doing my holiday episode, well, think, um, Christmas episode for this month, because it is December 1st, so that's why I'm going to do that um, today. And also, um, Knit Pearl Girl Carrie, she was the one that is hosting this um, Ugly Sweater podcast thing. And there's also a sad story about Carrie um, this week, so I will be explaining that after the thank you section, so just to let you know. So, um, I guess I can just get to the show, and this thing's probably going to bother me in my face today, but I'm just going to put it back in my head. But anyways, let's get to the show, because I do have, like, three pages of show notes this week, because I do have a lot to talk about. So, let's get to thank yous. So, my first thank you is to people who are joining the Facebook group. We do have, like, um... I'll probably say nine people so far. A lot of them are my family members, but if you are joining the um, Facebook group, thank you very much. I will be linking the Facebook group down below in the description box this week as well, so you can go and join. So thank you to the people who are joining that. Also, I want to say thank you to Deb, Deb C. Quilt. She, um, she dyed up some pretty fiber that I saw because I go on my friend's activity in my Ravelry page. And she um, dyed up some very pretty um, fiber, and she spun out. I'm like, wow, I really love those colors. Like, how did you do that? And I, I know how to dye fiber and yarn, but I want to know what color she used. And so she says, well, I used acid colors, and really, for me, I'm not, like, I don't want to do acid um, dyes yet because I don't want to cause any problems, and I just want to do Kool-Aid and food coloring. That's the most easiest and funnest and most non stinkable um, dyeing that you can do, but anyway, she, um, like, gave me this, um, Kool-Aid chart of all different colors that you can do when you're dyeing, and so that was, like, really cool, and so she told me how she would do it, she did Kool-Aid, and so thank you, Deb, for that, and I will be dyeing up the fiber that you gave me as soon as I get the, um, Kool-Aid, because my Walmart that I go to, their Kool-Aid section is very poor, so I don't know. I might go to the dollar store and see if they have Kool-Aid, or I can always go and or I can always go to Joann's and get the Bolton's food coloring. But I don't never know. You'll see that later as soon as I dye it up. Also, I want to say thank you to Gail P. Gail. Um, she helped me figure out on how to put my pattern as a free robbery download. So thank you very much, Gail. That was very nice of you to do that because. I didn't know on how to do anything like that on Ravelry for a free Ravelry download for a pattern. So thank you very much and she um, edited the pattern for me and she put the pictures in and I'll be showing you what the pattern looks like in the other stuff section of the show. So thank you very much Gail for doing that for me. I also want to say thank you to Stitching Out Loud for letting me know that she got my cow for her charity. Um, you can also still participate in the charity. I think there's a due date, I think probably December 8th. I'm not sure. You can always message that she's not loud and she'll probably, Kat, that's her name. You'll, she'll probably know. So thank you very much, Sit Not Loud Cat, for um, telling me that you got the um, cow. So thank you very much. And I hope you, um, I hope the person who ever gets that, I hope they enjoy. Um, I also want to say thank you for people who did join. The November KL, there will be drawings today for the KAL for November in my group, so um, you'll see what the prizes are soon. So um, so thank you to people who did join the KAL for November. Also, I want to say thank you to people who are joining the my group on um, Ralph Reed and it's been fun. So thank you for everyone who's joining. And we do have, let me look on here, um, is that right down here? You see, oh yeah, we we have 78 members in the group now, so yay, and we have 22 more people that we need to join the group to have the 100 member prize giveaway. So, yay, almost there to 100. We have 22 more, so that's a really um, big thank you to everyone who's joining. 
Also, I want to say thank you to people who are joining the memory of Carrie and uh, that poor girl to KL in my group. And so, this let me explain about that a little bit. So, if you are a part of Knit Pearl Girl podcast group on Ravelry. Her name's Carrie. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat's dry again this week. Um, she did pass away this Monday, this past Monday, Monday morning, and we don't know why she passed away, so I don't know yet. I wish, um, I hope that her family will be okay. It's very sad that she died. Um, so, yeah, and I, when I first heard about that, I'm like, Wow, that just like really shocked me. This came out of the blue, and so I was very sad. And what I was trying, what I was thinking in my head, well, Carrie was a designer, and so I want to do something to be memorable of Carrie. And so I was thinking, well, how about we do a KAL of all of her patterns? And so you can do any one of her patterns, and let me um, read the patterns to you. I have them written down in my book here. So the first pattern is Lady Edith. The second pattern is crossword, Crosswords at the Coffee Shop. The third one is Walnut Grove. The um, fourth one is Rustic Autumn Shawl. And the last one is Darcy, Darcy Shawlette. So you can do any one of her patterns. You just have to tell me why you love Carrie. Why did you love her podcast? What's, what was so great about her? And why, um, why do you thought that she was so great? So, I don't know what pattern I'm going to do yet. I'm still think I'm thinking about doing a hand spun. So yeah, so please go and join. I know that Carrie would love to see um, all her all the FOs, and I think she'll really appreciate it. So, and this episode um, name at the top is keeping your hearts, is because this really keep Carrie in your hearts because she was very sweet, and I did join her group. Um, like a month and a half ago, I think, and this by reading her blog, she was very great. She taught me a lot, and she was just very informational, and she was very, very sweet and stuff, so I don't really know her too well, but really, that's just a sad story, and I hope you go and join the KL in my group. There are, I think there's two other people who are doing KLs. I know Nittables is doing one of the crosswords at the coffee shop shawl. And then in Knit Pro Girl group, Carrie's group, um, what is her name? Dawn of Wolf Farms. She started the thread in Knit Pro group uh, for the KAL, so of any of her patterns. So if you want to join those two groups, you if you want to join those two KALs, please do so. You can also join mine. If you want to join mine, please tag your projects with Memory of Carrie, Knit for Fun. I will put that... Um, not right here, but I'll put it in at the end of the show because for some reason since I move, it's kind of acting weird lately. I just want to put like um, captions and stuff in the show. But if you want to do um, my KL for the memory of Carrie, please tag your projects with that. So I hope you go enjoy my KL and of all the others, and so we can um, always remember Carrie and her wonderful blog and all that type of stuff. And so it is very sad. I was very dis um, not disappointed, but I was just very like. Wow, I was just very shocked about it. So, anyways, let's get on a happier note here. So, let's get on to works in progress for this week. So, last week I showed you I was working on the Holden Chalette by um, Mindy Weiss. And I'm almost done with it. I am on the border. So, let me show you show you this. Um, I am knitting it out of Dream and Color Smushy. I don't know what colorway it is. So this is very, um, let's see here, this is a very cool type of purple, I really like it, I really love enjoying knitting it, and this shawl is going by so quick. And so, last week I showed you, I was just at the beginning of the shawl, so this like right there, I was just like, just beginning it basically. And so I knitted the whole body. So you can see here, and I really like it. It's super nice to knit with this yarn. And I am starting the border, as you can see. So I just started it last night, only like five rows in. So, yeah, I really enjoyed knitting it. And um, I named this on a size US6 4.0 millimeter. And it's just coming by really quick. And this will probably be an FO for next week because it's just a really nice shell. And 
how I wear my shawl is, is I just wrap it around my neck. I don't wear them like over my shoulders because they're too small basically. Like for shawl shawls, like really big shawls, like like my my wish shawl that I made this summer, I wear that around my shoulders because it's a really big shawl. But for this one, just like for shawlettes, I just put it around my neck. So that's what I'm knitting on right now. And I really love how this is just like a semi-solid with all the different color variations in it. And then my lighting is kind of bad today, so let me see if I can put it over here. So that's what it looks like. It's very nice. It is super quick knit. Um, I did have, um, I did go over the limit of my stitches, because this is also a free pattern, so I'm not giving anything away. And so, I mean, I'm about to finish because it's getting kind of hot in here. Um, so, the pattern says um, you're going to increase and do, like, the border, the, the body. You're going to increase until you reach to 193 stitches. And so, I was just knitting away, knitting away, not paying attention to the pattern, and... I went up to 200 and I think 20 stitches. Yeah, I know. Because um, I do knit really fast. Like, I don't know why. I just knit super fast on stuff. And I, I wasn't counting. I know that's a very bad thing to do. And so I was like, oh, darn it. So I like I count all my stitches when I'm like, I have 220 stitches on here. And so what I did is this is also a very good tip is I just count how many stitches I needed to go back to, to 193 stitches. And so I did, so I just counted down my rows on how many I need to go down to go and get 193 stitches. And I put in a lifeline. And a lifeline is where you just um, pick up every right leg of the stitch until you reach to the end, and then you take out all then you take um, all your stitches off the needle and unravel it until you get to that um, white piece of thread. And that thread um, saves your stitches so you don't have all these dropping stitches. I'll probably do a tutorial on that soon. I'm not sure if you want me to do that if you don't know how to do a lifeline. But that's how I do mine. And so I just did that and I got 193 stitches. And so now I'm just working on my border. I did make a little mistake here when I did when I was putting in the lifeline because... Um, I don't know why I just made like these two holes really big out of, out of all the other ones, but you can't really tell like when I block it, it's all going to be the same size. So, anyways, that's my only work in progress for this week, and I don't have um, the picture to show you what the shawl looks like is because the tablet um, right here, the pattern that I have on there from the Holden shawl onto my um, app that I have doesn't want to work, doesn't want to open up, so. I did print out the pattern last night, but the, my ink is running low on my printer, so you can't see what the shawl looks like anyway. So, that's my only work in progress for this week. I do have an F.O., and that F.O. is a little chubby chirp, as you can see here. I love making these. Uh, I did make this this morning, uh, because I was writing at my show notes, and I'm like, I don't have any F.O. F.O.'s for this week. And so, I was like, oh, darn it. So, I was just going through my queue and saying, oh, what's so quick and easy I can make in, like, an hour or two. And so, I scrolled over to a chubby chirp. And I made, like, three of these already. And so, this is, like, my third one. And I just love it. And this is knit out of my hand spun. And let me show you what it looks like. This hand spun, I spun this summer and this is also I dyed of this colorway it's like this frosty uh, pink color and I did knit this on my new Knit Picks needles I forgot what these needles were called but it's their new um, line of needles so that's what I knit, knit on and I really like enjoy knitting with these needles um, the only bad thing I have to say about it is their join my stitches did get caught on the join, so that's the only bad thing about it. I know a lot, um, I am sort of picky on about the joins on circular needles. is because I would like my stitches to go sliding, like, slide over them. So, that's the only bad thing, but I really love the wood. It's super slick and smooth. And that's what I really loved about knitting with the needles. So, anyways, that's what I knitted on. is size US 6 4.0. And the beak... I knit out of some Karen Simply Soft and their, um, what is it called? 
or twists or something. I'm not sure. It's her new yarn line, I guess, in this like green Hawaiian. I think it was called like Hawaiian something colorway. And so, and then for the eyes, I don't have any safety eyes. Um, I can never find them. I know you can get them online, but really, I don't want to pay shipping and handling for safety eyes. So I just used felt. And I didn't use any cutouts to make the eyes. I just took my scissors and cut around the felt so it can make um, the eyes. So that's what I did. And this is what the little chubby trip looks like. And really, I don't know who I'm going to give this to. This might sit on my shelf. Well, let me turn that away. It's going to sit on my shelf with my computer monster right there. But I'm not sure yet. So that's my FO. Oops, I almost dropped them for this week. So, he's super cute. So that's my only FO. Let me put that over there with that so I don't get all my stuff confused. Let's see. Okay. Now, off to spinning for this week. Um, I do have some spinning. I haven't finished anything, but I do have something. And last week I was showing you I was spinning up the Knit by Design Fiber. Oop, my bobbin almost fell on the can drop me right thing today. Knit by Design. And she, and this is in the Fallen Spring Skies colorway. And this colorway sort of reminds me of, I don't know, Hawaii to me. This seems like the foamy um, sea with the um, grayness and stuff. So I did spin more on the bobbin. As you can see here. And let me find my end. Oh, that's always a scare. Oh, there it is. I hate not finding my end. So, again, it is spinning up pretty thin, as you can see here. Can't really tell. But it is spinning up pretty thin, as you can see on my forehead or on my hat. Let's see? It's spinning pretty thin. And so I'm very happy. I still have, I'll probably say, a couple ounces to go. Because this is like around 7.5 ounces. So... I really, really enjoy spinning this, and it's just super soft, it is super washed merino, so it is super soft, and really this fiber just goes super quick through the wheel, um, it spins super nice and thin, it doesn't break easily, um, so yeah. And also, by the way, uh, Deb, she said, oh, your spinning looks great, and um, I was telling her, well, I want to save up money to get myself a new wheel, like when I get a job and stuff. And I'm not 16, but I'm almost there. So I'm kind of dropping everything. Sorry about that. But anyways, I, t I was telling her, well, I want to save up money to get a lady ladybug wheel. And she says, oh, I heard bad things about it and stuff like that. But I'm like, well, yeah, me too. So, um, but you never know by the time I turn 16. I am 14 right now. So by the time I turn 16, you never know that the ladybug wheel might be in better condition. You never know. So I was telling her, well, I want to save up money to give myself a ladybug wheel. And, she, and I told her, well, I have a Fantasia wheel right now from Kromsky. And she says, oh, me too. I'm like, well, that's kind of interesting. We both have the same wheels. And I said, well, what type of what color is it? She says, it's the cream colored wheel, like, you know, the lightest color wood with the, um, what's that called? Um, walnut accent. Same with me. So that's kind of interesting that we both have the same wheels. So... Anyways, thank you, Deb, again, for the wonderful fiber. It's super nice and soft to spin with. It's like, I really love this fiber. So, thank you again for that fiber. And I always tell the same thing. Thank you to people who have gifted me stuff because it's so nice. And they don't have to do that, but they do anyway. So, I'm sorry. So, again, that's spinning for this week. And also, for spinning, um, I do want to, again, dye up the fiber. I you probably get sick of me hearing that, um, telling you guys this, but I do want to dye up this fiber that she also gave me. It's Australian Merino Roll, Merino Roll in the 5 ounces, so I do want to dye it up in some colorway. I'm not sure yet. Um, I probably will go on the internet and look up a picture of a bird or something. I want to probably do a color of a bird on here. I oh, know that sounds kind of weird, but I want to do it like some color of a bird, so... Yeah, you're probably thinking of a bird, but anyways. Um, again, and then also, let me put that over there. All kind of disorganized today. Also, um, the poll is still up of what should I spin next. Um, you can choose between the two Falkland fibers and also the white fiber for me to spin next. So, 
that will be up until around the New Year's, I guess, January 1st. You still have to vote until January 1st. Also, for the Carrie, um, KL, Memory of Carrie, that will also be up until January 3rd, until I go back to school. So, and that's when I go back to school, so, because of Christmas break. And for here in Nevada, Christmas break starts, I think, November, uh, December 21st. So, something ridiculous, like, really close to Christmas. So, yeah. So, um, that will be up, Carrie Cow will be up until January 3rd, I think I'm going to do that. And also the poll for me for spinning will be up, um, you know, January 1st. So, that's the two things that I have to tell you. Um, now off to, let me see here, what's next for the show? Um, again, I want to do um, the Carrie I'm going to participate in the memory of Carrie because I thought that story was so sad that I had, that everyone had to hear that Carrie passed away on Monday. So I was like, well, I want to make a show so we can all remember her. So I was thinking of maybe doing the crossword, crosswords in the coffee shop shawl or the, um, what's that one called? The autumn something that looks like you can do with hand spun. So, one of those two are the Dar Darcy Shawlette, or, I don't know, one of her patterns. I'm not sure. I'll probably tell you guys next week. So, I want to probably make it out of the Falkland fiber that I spun, um, that Deb gave me. And I got 328 yards out of it. And so, I'll probably make some Shawlette out of it. So, it is around a um, lightweight... Not lightweight, heavy sport to no, not heavy sport, heavy fingering to sport weight. And so I want to um, make something out of that, like make a shawl, like one of her shawls out of that um, yarn, or I want to make um, a shawl out of this pretty hand spun that I did like a year and a half ago, and I want to use it up. And this is Highland Handmaids, and um, this is 100% Corydell. I forgot what colorway it was. Uh, something rainbow. So I want to do um, a shawl out of this. I don't know what shawl I'm going to do of hers. Again, this is all, th these three yarns that I'm showing you here are um, the yarns that I might think about doing for one of her shawls. So I, I forgot how many yardage I got out of this, but I'll probably just count on my knitting naughty soon. And so again, I, I don't know what yards I got, but I might do, um, a shawl of this, and this this is actually my first Navajo ply yarn, and this is, this is what it looks like. So it looks like close to a worsted weight, to like heavy sport to an errand to a worsted. So that's and also another yarn that that I could use because I want to do I, I do want to use some of my hand spun for the cow uh, for the not cow. Yeah, K A L K L. I don't know what I'm saying here. And also, um, this one I showed you guys. This is my very first episode of the podcast, and this is some um, fiber that I got from a farm off of Local Harvest. And this is a hundred percent alpaca, and I love alpaca. It's so soft, and so I got like three hundred and twenty-eight yards of this too. So, and this one is actually a fingering weight. So I might do. Um, one of her shawls out of those three yarns. I'm not sure yet. I'll probably just tell you guys next week. I think I'm going towards the um, Falkland fiber because it looks very pretty and I think it'll look very pretty in one of her patterns. So I might do that. I, I am going to do one of her um, patterns, but I, that I might make that um, pattern out of that yarn. How this is making sense here. I'm kind of tired today. <laughs> like daydreaming. I don't know why. But anyways, um, another thing I want to do is thinking, I want to do another thinking of you, Cal, um, my pattern for a Christmas gift for someone. So I'm not sure yet um, what colorway I'm going to use. Um, so she says she wants it in a cream color. She knows that she is getting it for Christmas. So she says um, maybe in a cream colored or um, something like that that goes with every one of her outfits. So that's what I'm going to do next. Also, um... I also want to make a red fire scarf, this is what I'm calling a red fire scarf, and because I showed you the scarf last week that I made for my best friend, um, not my my best, el el I can't say that word, elderly friend, she is very sweet, and I hope she, I will be sending out her pattern, uh, not her pattern, her scarf, 
um, soon this week. So, so I want to make mine out of this really like fiery um, red and orange colorway. So I want to do that next for myself. For that will probably be my Christmas gift to myself. And that's it for what's next on the show. Now off to sewing. Um, I made a sewing. Oops. Um, I made a sewing on how to make. Um, can't not think today. I made a tutorial on how to make um, high waisted jean shorts, and that will be going up today. Uh, I did make that on Monday actually on the tutorial. So. I did make the, I did finish the pair of jeans, the pair of high waisted shorts, and again the tutorial will be up on um, YouTube on my channel as soon as I um, upload it because I did edit it and everything. So this is what they look like. So I did sew this rainbow trim. As you can see, is I did cut on a slant because when you cut on a slant, it makes it this really cool um, design on your leg. So you'll see why. Um, I'll show you, I did show you guys that in my tutorial actually. So I did sew on this uh, rainbow ribbon with a zigzag stitch. Then I frayed it with some tweezers. So I did that on both legs. Then I also put this heart design, as you can see here, on the side with some jewels. And on the back, I um, frayed, let me see, yeah, it's on this side. I frayed uh, the pocket so with my tweezers and stuff. So these are very cute shorts. I did try them on and I tried them on I'm like, oh, I don't like those. Those don't look right. But they look kind of cool when you wear tall socks and you can wear them roller skating. So these are my roller skating shorts for next summer. So I hope they'll fit me because these are kind of, these shorts are pretty tight, but you never know. I'll probably give them to my friend if they're too small. So. That tutorial will be going up today, and this is and this is also a finished object for sewing. So, this tutorial will be going up today, and I hope you enjoy it. And if you are going to make it your own pair of high waisted jean shorts, please uh, post a picture in the Facebook group, or please post a picture on up, or tell me through um, YouTube, or you can also post a picture in the Ravelry group. So, this is what I made this week, and I also did a tutorial on it. So super fast and easy. It only took me like an hour to make these. So yeah, I really like it. And so I was going to bleach these and like put it, make it a different color, but I'm like, oh no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to um, bleach them out. So, because I just want them to be the regular jean color. So again, that's what I made this week. And also that, that tutorial will be going up today, like this afternoon soon. Okay, what else can I talk about for sewing? Um, last week I told you guys about how I went to the Black Friday um, sale at Joanne's on Saturday and I didn't get anything because everyone was grabbing everything and I couldn't get to any of the fabric. So I did go uh, on that Sunday and I did get some fabric for a dress. Because usually their bridal fabric that they have there or their prom fabric um, is super... Um, expensive like I can't afford it because I do pay for all of my projects because I save up all my birthday money and all of my Christmas money that I get that people give me and so oh, this is kind of tight on my arms here let's go on for a second okay so I did get um, some fabric for a dress and last week I showed you that the dress that I'm making well is B by the side of all B it looks kind of cute and all but I just want to make A a simple, easy, cute dress. But I will be putting a flower on the side like um, what B has. So it is going to be like B, but it's not going to have like the ribbon and stuff, but we'll have a flower. So just look at the dress like like that just with the flower. So I'll be making um, that dress right here or this one, a plain or just one like that. So I did get the fabric on Sunday. And so let me show you what I got. So I did get at Joann's, as you can see here, the big Joann's bag. So I will be bending a lot here for a second. So I was thinking in my head, like, they have so much um, different colors of fabric um, for bridal and for proms and stuff. And so I went to their fabric section where they have all that stuff at. And so I was looking through all the colors, and I'm like, 
I don't really like any of these. So then I came across this really pretty color. That's and this color is like this nude slash pan uh, champagne color. And I think it's just really pretty. I hope it's playing up on the camera. But it's just really pretty. I just really like it. And so I did get the fabric for that. So this is for the um what's this for? This is for this um skirt of the um dress. Um this is for the um overlayer of the dress. Like I don't know if overlayer is like over the top so it gives it the um sheen color. Uh, I don't know what I'm saying. It's it's going over the skirt of the um like the bottom of the dress so it gives it like a um, sparkly color like a sparkly uh, feel to it so as you can see there's sparkles over it and it is sheer because it is going over this fabric where the dress um, where the main body of the dress is so that will be over the skirt then I got the top fabric and you're probably saying wow you got a lot of the top fabric yes because if I make a mistake on the top, I do want to, um, I do want to redo it. So I did get an extra yard of the, um, for the top of the dress. So that's for the top of the dress. Then I got the lining as well for the dress. And the lining that I chose was this heavy duty satin. And so you're probably thinking, what's heavy duty satin? Well, it's just, it is satin, but it's like much more stronger than satin like I made my dress out of. So that will be the lining of the bodice as you can see here. So it will be lining and so when I wear the dress it won't itch me and won't um, affect my skin. So that's the lining for the dress. And then also I got the dress as well was the interfacing for the top as well. So I got the interfacing and I did I did go up to a lady there. Um, she was just shopping like I was, and she was near the interfacing section. And I asked her, "Well, um, do you know what type of interfacing I could use for a dress?" And so she was like uncertain. She was looking with me, and I was uncertain because I did. I never used interfacing in a dress before. I have used interfacing in many, many other projects before, but never in a dress. And so she says, oh, I don't know. She was looking through it, and I'm like, well, you don't have to look through it anymore. I'll just go up to one of the cutting counter ladies. And so the cutting counter ladies, they were cutting the fabric. They were kind of busy, so I just went up to the demonstration table where they demonstrate the sewing machines. And there was this lady there. Uh, she was kind of kind of rude. She was kind of, like, snooty to me, but I was like, oh, it's okay. It's, everyone has an attitude sometimes, so... I asked her well, what type of fabric I can use for the um, dress, and I showed her the fabric I was using, and she says, oh, we'll use a lightweight interfacing. I was thinking in my head, well, light, lightweight interfacing, and I'm like, well, will that be stiff enough? I was thinking that in my head, and so I chose a medium weight, um, so this makes sure that it's extra stiff, and so I did chose a medium weight uh, fusible interfacing. I hope it is fusible. Yeah, it is. Oof, that kind of panic attack there for a minute. So, I did chose a fusible, medium weight interfacing. And so, I know this is going to work because I uh, dealt with interfacing before. So, I hope it um, works. So, wish me luck. So, anyways, that was my little story there about the interfacing. I also got um, a 14, 14 inch metal zipper and the pattern didn't call for a metal zipper this called for regular polyester one and what I mean by metal is the teeth are metal besides the plastic and so that's what I got as well so you can see the teeth are plastic instead of um, teeth are metal instead of plastic and it has a stronger pole instead of the one that I had on my other dress so that's what I also got and then I also got the um, hook and eyes and I never um, done hook and eyes before on anything so it just seems very easy as soon as you just sew it on by hand so I got those as well for the dress and then last but not least I got this over here I got a flower you know if I say oh you got a flower for a dress yeah I did so what I'm going to do 
for a dress is, this was in the pattern, is I'm just going to cut off this humongous stem where the flower um, ends right here. So I'm just going to cut that off. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just probably going to take fabric glue or I could just take off the, um, or just put a piece of fabric right there and sew it onto the dress by hand. So that will be, ooh, excuse me again, that will be on the side right here of the dress. So it has like this little flower. So it gives it like some extra um, look to it. So it looks like a, you have a flower there instead of just a plain old dress. So that's also what I got as well. So that was it for the fabric and the dress. And again, I am making uh, dress A or B. And so as you can see there. So I'm leaning towards dress A because it's simply simple. Same with dress B, it's simple, but I'm not going to do the lining. I'm not going to do the um, edging like it has on there. So that's what I'm going to do for that fabric. And I'll be sewing that over on Christmas break when I have time and concentration. And also what I liked about um, Butterit patterns is they have the sizing chart up here for the bust, waist, and hip because it's like on other patterns they don't have that they have it like somewhere else so that's why I like about Butterick is they have it up there so and if you want to make this dress it's the Butterick pattern B44 B443 so yeah, yeah I can't say three three fours at once so B4443 so if you want to make this pattern so also I've been thinking about doing a sew along with um, people who know how to sew. Um, I don't know, that, that might be my new, I'll probably be in the new year at some time. So, I'm not sure. So let me get all this fabric back in here. Sorry for the um, bag crinkle, but... And you're probably thinking, oh, you're just stuffing all the fabric in the bag. Well, yeah, I am, but you know, when you sew and stuff, you can always iron it back together without the wrinkles. But anyways, that was it for the um, sewing. Not not for sewing, that was it for the dress. And that, all that stuff cost me around, I'd probably say $50. Uh, I did, um, didn't have enough money in my wallet, so I did have to call up my mom and she had to, um, like she dropped me off at Joanne's because Joanne's is right next to Costco um, where I live. So it's like right there. So she um, dro she dropped me off at Joanne's and she went to Costco and get some stuff. And I called her and said, oh, I don't have enough money. And so she came and paid the rest of it. So, so I had like, I don't know, I forgot what I had. But anyways, that was it for the dress. Um, let's see here. I also, again, this is my ugly sweater. I didn't make an ugly sweater for the... Um, holiday themed podcast for all the podcasters because I didn't have one so I just took a shirt out of my dad's closet that I thought was kind of ugly so I do like flannel shirts but this one is, just looks like holiday themed because it's um, red and black and white and stuff so I just chose this one so that was my ugly sweater for this um, holiday themed podcast episode that Carrie again tell you she passed away but she was a host of the Knit Pro Girl podcast that she also hosted um, the Ugly Sweater um, podcasting episode for everyone who has a podcast. So that was it for sewing for this week. Also, I want, um, my friend at school, she said she's giving me something for Christmas, but I don't know what she's getting me. And I don't know what I'm going to make her. I might bake her some um, cookies, but I don't know if she's allergic to anything. So I might make her a fleece blanket, but I don't, don't know yet. Because Christmas, by the way, today is December 1st, and Christmas is in 24 days. So I have to get my butt in gear and get all this stuff done. So anyways, that's it for sewing. Um, what's next here? Also, um, I have a section in my show called Midnight Stories. So I have um, one Midnight Story this week. Uh, so yesterday I was playing with him and on he loves to jump on every single piece of furniture that we have and so I was playing with him and he jumped onto my um, dad's bed and so in midnight he loves to eat socks it's he doesn't eat them but he loves to put them in his mouth 
And I think it's kind of gross because your feet are in them, your feet get sway, but he still loves putting his mouth in it. And so, um, there's a sock on the floor and he gets all excited when he sees a sock. And so he was like, oh my gosh, because the um, wall was right here and the bed was right here and they were like so close to each other. I'd probably say it's like at least five feet away from each other. And he is a huge dog. And so he was like figuring out how to um, jump down to get the sock. And so what he did is he is so flexible. And so he jumped, like not jumped, but he like put his body up and twist his body as his whole butt was in the air and then he went down and got the sock. It was, it was, it's hard to explain but it was super funny because it was just was and I was laughing on, I was laughing so hard it was so funny because it was just really was and then, and then I was playing tug of war with the sock with him and he was just, and then he didn't want to let go of the sock and so I had to open up his mouth and get the sock to him and plus he's been eating everything like putting everything in his mouth and he's just, he is seven months on December 6th, so, you know, he's still a puppy. Um, so that's it for Midnight Stories for this week. Um, now for other stuff of the show. Other stuff of the section of the show. Again, Carrie, um, she passed away this Monday, and also she, um, started the RAP, R-A-P, that's Random Acts of Patterns, and that's when you, it's on Tuesdays, and so you give a pattern like, you give the pattern to people that you don't know, people you do know on Ravelry, for a certain amount of dollars, and you just do that on Tuesdays, so, and, um, I hope everyone, um, keeps doing the rap and everything, because that is, um, a really good, um, thing that she started, and, and really that's another thing that we can do to remember Carrie, so, so that, I just want to get that out there. Also, drawings for the November KAL, yay! So, I have it up here on my tablet, and so there's, let's see, one, two, three, four people who joined, we, you know, that's not a lot, but still at least people joined, like last KL for the summer, only one person joined, but at least other people joined for this KL. So, um, let's see, four people joined, and those four people were, um, let's see, Allison, Deb, um, Kaylee and Kat, and those people's Ralphie names are Allison Roseboom, Deb C. Quilts, X Any Donuts X, and Stitching Out Loud. So you four get a project from, uh, not project, you two get a prize from me. This one, let me show you guys what their projects look like. So this one is Allison's. That one, whoops, that one's Deb C. Quilts. That's very nice, Deb. All these projects are very nice. This one is Kaylee, she did a fingerless mitt, and these two are stitching out loud. So, thank you to everyone who joined, those four people, and you four, um, I don't know yet what I'm going to do for prizes, I'm thinking about doing project bags, and so, um, I'm going to contact you four soon, or um, later today, telling you what type of project bag do you want, do you want a, I'm going to do drawstring bags, because those are much easier, and not um, so time consuming because box bags are more time consuming than draw drawstring bags. So um, I will be contacting you for today, telling you guys what type of drawstring bag do you want? Do you want big one, medium size one, small one? And so you four um, did win um, a drawstring bag for me. So those will be coming out probably, I don't know, I'll say the latest will be the end of December. But um, so yeah, so you four get a project bag for me, a drawstring bag, and so yeah, I'll be contacting you guys for your name and address, and if you are under 18, please um, tell your parents so you know everything's okay. And so anyways, that you four got a um, prize for me. So again, it's Allison, yeah, Allison, Deb, Kaylee, and Kat. So you four got a prize for me so and the, and that prize is a drawstring bag so yay thank you for joining and I'll be again I'll be contacting you for soon as soon as I um, get this video edited and stuff so yay thank you for joining the KL with me this month and also I didn't post my picture of what I did for this month for um, the giving thanks KL but I did make that scarf that I made for my friend and so it is in the fall color, it's like a bluish brown, so 
I will be, um, that is my gift, I guess. So, anyways, thank you everyone who joined. And again, I'll be contacting you for soon as I, um, edit this video. Also, I, I made a podcast email where you can contact me if you have any questions or concerns like I do. I'm not free, like, for my PMs and stuff, but I do have a podcast email where you can email me for any questions as well. And that is knit and spin for fun podcast at AOL.com. And I'll be posting that again at the end of this video in a little slideshow link where you can um, contact me through email if you want to. So, again, that's knit and spin for fun podcast at AOL.com. So, yay! So, that's where you can also contact me to get um, questions if you have any. Also, I did make a pattern, the um, Thinking of You Cal. Again, I told you guys about that last week, but um, that was in a PDF form, but now it is in a PDF form. So I just want to show you, show you what it looks like on paper. So again, my printer is running out of ink, and so it doesn't look that great. But really, when you have ink in your printer, it does look really great. So is this what it looks like on paper? And that's my mom, and this is me. And so it's what it looks like. So it's Thinking of You, Cal, by Kirsten Wozni. That's my name. And so that's what it looks like. So I give you um, my gauge, the materials, and how to get started, the pattern, and the description at the bottom. So I just want to say thank you to Stitching Out Loud, Cat, who um, she mentioned me. She PM'd me, and she says, um, are you supposed to repeat this round? It's something in the basketball pattern that I forgot to put in there. A, an error that I made in while I was typing. So, thank you for um, mentioning that as well. So, again, that's Thinking of You, Cal, by me. So, this is a free Ravelry download. You can get it for free. You can start knitting on it. You can post pictures on it. And you can also wear it as a cow or you can wear it as a head thing where you can keep your head warm. So, you can knit this for charities, you can knit this for yourself, Christmas gifts. Oh no, my computer almost died. <laughs> I like it just turned black on me, but anyways. You can knit this for yourself, you can knit this for a charity, you can do it for anyone. So, and I just want to say thank you to Gail again, Gail P. of Ravri for, um, for editing the pattern and stuff. So, thank you very much. Also, um... I want to say congratulations to Karen, um, Al Carriel, I think her name is, her, um, podcast is Round and Twist with Karen. She recently got married, so I just want to say thank you, I just want to say, um, congratulations on her getting married. And, um, you can go watch her ceremony, she, um, uploaded a video of her ceremony on her blog. So, and her blog is Round and Twist with Karen at blogspot.com, so you can go and check her ceremony out. Also, I did get a PM from someone on Ronald Free saying that they would like to have the show on iTunes. I will be getting the show on iTunes soon. It's just I'm very busy with um, school and stuff, so I will be figuring that out over Christmas break as soon as I'm on Christmas break. So that's it for the show this week. Um, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions about the show, Anything in this episode, or anything in the group, or anything for the KLs I'm hosting, uh, please, pl please PM me through Ravelry. You can also uh, message me through Facebook, or you can also um, email me at Instagram for Fun Podcast at AOL.com. So um, that's where you can um, ask questions or concerns, or um, yeah, that's it. And you can also find me on Ravelry as Instagram for Fun, and you can also um, join the group. And for fun things, you can look in there. So yeah, that's it for this episode. And if, um, please like the video down at the bottom. Please subscribe at the top. And also please comment in every single um, group that I have and every single thing I have. So yeah. And I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys next week for another episode. And again, if um, please join DKL with um, me with for the remembrance of Carrie. So we can all... Um, have wonderful stalls to remember her for her wonderful um, work that she did. So I hope you enjoyed and thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day. Great day. So thanks for watching and take care. Bye-bye.